Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this uh, presentation. Thank you for coming here. Uh, let's kick it off right away. Uh, first, a little bit of introduction. Uh, I guess you would have looked at my profile. Uh, uh, as you see, you know, I have uh, done a fair amount of development in Java web applications. And uh, I have this open source project that you know I'll talk about shortly. Uh, in terms of expectations, you know, I don't really uh, represent any vendor or uh, you know any particular technology. I am just a passionate uh, technology user. So I hope that the session will be a lot different from maybe a lot of the other se other sessions where you know, I'll just talk, I'll just share my experiences uh, developing web applications. You know, I'm sure a lot of you would relate to that. I'm assuming that a lot of us are you know, Java developers who are working on web applications for clients. And um, of course, you know, I will not miss an opportunity to plug my session that's coming up in the afternoon. Uh, you know, I have this uh, workshop. You know, so this session obviously is more of a PowerPoint presentation where you know, I run through slides. Of course, uh, I do have uh, a fair amount of code samples that I've tried to put on the slides. But if you want more, if you want to actually see code, and if you want to you know, probably see me mess up and you know be entertained when all my demos fail, uh, you know, feel free to check out the afternoon session. Okay, so that's in hall B, uh, two forty p.m. after lunch. Uh, so I'm, I'm inviting you to that as well. So in terms of expectations, again, uh, as I said, you know, I do not, I'm not a wicket committer. I'm obviously here to talk about uh, Apache Wicket, which is a web framework for Java. So you know, I've used some parts of it. I may, may not have used all parts of it, but I'm just here to share you know, what uh, my impressions are. And of course, uh, another thing that I would like uh, for you to take away is. You know, uh, you know, I'm sure all of you are using some MVC framework or some web UI framework right now in your project. So uh, obviously, I want to make you think. You know, uh, are you are you working in an efficient way? Do you think that this is a better way of doing things? You know, I just want to uh, challenge you know, your thinking a little. Uh, I would request you to keep an open mind. Some of the concepts that Wicket brings to the table are very, uh, you know, very new, very radical, totally different from maybe what you would have been used to. I'm assuming that you know again majority of this group here uh, would have you know you know worked on struts one you know a lot of application is struts so be prepared this is a totally different way of doing things so just you know follow along okay so that's the brief outline I won't spend too much time on this I will introduce the subject application so you know uh, whatever I'm talking there's a whole lot of code to back it up uh, you can go to the uh, website and download it uh, and you know. So it's a real life application. That's another thing I want to stress. This is not a hello world application. It's not a demo that looks good. Uh, but this is an actual application that works. It's being used by companies all around the world. Uh, and you know, I'll talk about actually migrating from framework A to framework B and, uh, and the things that I learned along the way. Um, architecture, of course, before and after, and then what happened during the migration and some of the points that I would like to share. Um, of course, you know, comparison keeps happening throughout the presentation. I'll show you that this is how it look, used to look like, and then this is the difference after I applied a new way of doing things. And of course, I would like to just leave you with some thoughts. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, I hope to leave you with a lot of impressions on Wicked, and you know, hopefully, you would really feel like trying it out. Um, I do hope to have time for question and question answer. So let's see, you know, how good I am at time management. All right. <coughs> So, introducing uh, the subject application. I'm not going to you know spend too much time on this. Um, you know, uh, but it's a source source project. Uh, it's got a fairly credible uh, amount of usage, uh, forty thousand downloads. The fact that it has been localized into about fifteen languages, you know, two points. One, obviously, Wicket is very good at localization, and uh, you know, the fact that it has been translated into Chinese. German, Japanese, uh, you know, Russian, and all kinds of languages shows that people are actually using this application all over the world. Um, Excellent. So, as I was saying, Wicket is now an Apache project which is a good thing in case you are now trying to sell Wicked to your management, obviously, or to your clients. Uh, this is it, you know, don't look back, choose Wicked, you know, of course, it's too early for me to say that. 
let's go through the slides and see what Wicket has to offer. And then you know you can make uh, your own choice. Uh, today it's in version 1.3.3 and that's the URL for you. These slides obviously would be available to you at the end of the session. It would be, uh, I don't know, distributed to you on a DVD. Uh, someone actually picked up the slides from me just before the presentation. So you know, don't worry about getting these slides. Okay, so very quickly, Hello World is a must for any uh, technology. So uh, um, this is something you'll have to get used to. Um, let's see if it works. Okay. Uh, one thing about Wicket is it keeps your markup, which is you know this part over here and your Java code over here, uh, side by side with the same name. Okay, and this will be in your package folder, you know, in your package structure in your ID. Okay, this takes a little getting used to because all of us, most of us, have grown up, you know, having JSPs under web binder or you know in that area. So you know, it takes a little getting used to, but. There are a lot of advantages to this. Number one, you don't need to keep searching in two different directory structures. Uh, as you will see going forward in this presentation, it makes a lot of logical sense. In one way, you know, people talk about something called the dry principle. You know, don't repeat yourself. You, know, you should have minimum of configuration. It's then next to each other. Both files have the same name, hello world, hello world.java, hello world.html. And now, uh, in terms of dynamic data, here we're going to insert the piece of text called hello world uh, in to a placeholder kept in the markup. One feature about the HTML markup is that it is pure HTML. There's not a single bit of you know, uh, you know logic or scriptlet or any kind of that kind of stuff there. And uh, in, in, in terms, for you to understand how it works, you know, the connection between the HTML and the Java is done by obviously an attribute which is a special XHTML compliant wicket attribute called wicket colon ID. And in this case, we just used the, the text MSG for plugging in Hello World and at runtime, this is what you get. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, that's all I will show you in terms of, you know, uh, I try to keep this simple, obviously. Uh, as I said, if you want to get into real life, uh, you know, code, you can, you know, attend the workshop in the afternoon. So, the architecture, um, of course, all of us, Know about you know the three tier uh, you know architecture and all that. So I just build um, the top the, the bottom two layers of now obviously you know I'm showing you the architecture of JTrack uh, the application that I'm talking about and um, uh, as you can see this application is built using Hibernate and Spring you know um, so obviously. The big question and the whole, you know, the big theme about today's presentation, what I'm doing here is all about the UI type. So let's forget about Spring and Hibernate for a moment. And let's examine in detail what goes in uh, to the presentation time. So yes, I think this would be familiar to a lot of you. you know, in fact, uh, anyone who's using Struts or you know, Spring MVC or something, I think even Struts 2 would by default for a, for a project choose JS, JSP slash JSPL. Okay. It's been a you know, standard choice, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, obviously, I went for the same decision. Uh, I decided to go for Spring MVC. You know, I was probably a very early adopter. Uh, it's a great framework, very flexible. Obviously, it removes all, I mean, it, it's a far big difference from Struts 1. You know, in fact, how many of you are still using Struts 1 in projects? Okay. Uh, no surprise, it still happens, uh, of course. But I think all of us are painfully aware that you know all that struts that we used to do, you know, is all kind of obsolete. People are now moving to all kinds of different things. In fact, that's I think all of us would agree. This is one of the biggest frustrations in you know Java development today. Which MVC framework should, should I choose? You have you know thousands out there, right? You have I don't know GWT, Tapestry, JSF, Wicket, uh, Stripe, Click. It's it's crazy. So uh, I probably like many of you have actually done a fair amount of research. You know, and trial and error, and, you know, with POCs and all that. So, you know, consider this presentation as you know, part of sharing my experience with you. I even chose Spring Webflow. Again, that was very, very new at the time. Uh, I was very much sold by Spring Webflow at the time, you know, that you can actually model page flows, you know, you can have a navigation state transition diagram defined, and you can have reusable subflows and all that. So, I have a couple of thoughts on that. We'll come up later during this presentation. Any of you using Spring Webflow on your project? Okay, just a couple of hands. And 
Um, security is obviously important, and I again, you know, uh, chose. I, I'm pretty much biased by Spring and a big fan of Spring Table. And uh, you know, I use. I, in fact, SAG today has now become Spring Security. It's like the name SAG is being deprecated. It's core part of Spring Framework. That's what I understand. Uh, so that's pretty much it. You've got an idea. And the thing is, what's interesting about this picture is a little misleading. It's a little misleading in the sense. Uh, it doesn't really give you the big picture. So what I'm going to do in the next few slides is actually, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to strike, you know, I'm going to set up some, I'm going to ring a few bells in your mind or whatever. Uh, but let me take you through the reality of JSP, you know, or template, uh, templating languages, you know, where you have tags to put in your UI. Let's look at the consequences and what happens when you actually work in a framework that uses this kind of an approach. Okay, so I'm going to take an example. Again, you know, I've chosen one of the, it, it's, a, it's a complex example, you know, so you see a lot of code coming up in the next couple of slides, so don't get too scared because this is a complex example. This is the case where uh, the user clicks on, you know, one of those um, uh, icons over there and then it explodes, you know, and it's over Ajax, obviously. You know, everyone wants Ajax nowadays because Google, Started doing all kinds of crazy stuff in Gmail, so okay, you have to join the uh, what is it called, join the bandwagon, and you know, so I implemented this feature in, in, in Jetpack. Okay, so it looks nice, but of course, there's a lot of work you need to do behind the scenes to achieve this. Uh, first, this code I'm showing you probably would look familiar. Uh, this applies to any MVC action-oriented framework. You know, it would apply to Spring MVC. This is a Spring MVC example. Uh, it could apply to, I guess, trucks to even trucks where you have an action to implement some execute method, whatever. In this case, obviously, you have to do some configuration where you have to say this URL has to map to this piece of Java code into the controller. And uh, let's see, what does the controller do? Nothing much, actually. <coughs> Sorry. Um, in fact, in this case, you know, you just Retrieving some collection from the database, which is you know you do DAO dot load something, get a collection back, and you know you just dump the user in because the user is required to show the UI. But suddenly I wanted to think about the fact that this is all that you need to do on the Java side. And now the framework, whatever it is, in this case it's Spring MVC, for whatever reason, whatever the, for whatever historical reason, is now trying to get you as a developer out of Java into a totally different world and I'll, I'll try to make that a little clearer. What I'm trying to say is probably encapsulated on this slide where this is a typical, let's say this is a read-only screen, okay? Okay, you have a request, you have some configuration, some XML somewhere saying you are mapping, right? And then the code that you just saw, it's controller return model and view, it will give you the view name and it will return some data which is your model, right? And finally, you have a JSP or something, right? You may be using velocity or something, but I'm assuming that most of us are comfortable of actually using JSP. Okay, so my point is this: there's nothing that's happening here. You just return a model and view, and it's another very interesting feature about that code is it's procedural, right? It has no object oriented there. You say begin, oh, you have a, have a URL to handle, do some database, then return, and that's it, you're done. Two lines of code, three lines of code maximum. So I'm obviously building up to, I think, one of the main points that I'm trying to make uh, regarding web development in general. So have a look at this, okay? Uh, don't worry if you can't read it, I'm just going to build a couple of uh, annotations on top of this with, with some, you know, slide animation and all that. So don't bother trying to read it, uh, but uh, what I've done is, this is one of the, this is, the J, this is not even the whole JSP, of course, this is probably the beginning of that JSP uh, behind whatever I'm just showing you, you have this Ajax, you have to click and then it loads one extra bit of HTML over Ajax, okay? So this is the JSP behind it. So, I mean, what's the big deal? But let's start looking, let's, let's, uh, let's dig into what is all going on, what's going on in this, okay? You, I think all of us are familiar with JSP include, right? You know, this is, Probably the easiest way to include uh, common header and footer. I think all of us are familiar with this. We don't think twice. Every JSP we have, one include. Okay, big deal. Right. 
This is an Ajax example, of course. Of course, uh, the Spring MVC is a framework that doesn't really have built-in Ajax. I would say most action frameworks fit into that category. Maybe you have annotations, maybe you have prototype support. But let's assume for a moment that you are writing a lot, lot of the Ajax stuff by hand. You're doing it manually. And in this case, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sorry I can't do much about it. What I can, I hope you can read at least the blocks. As I'm saying, I'm going to try my best to talk you through what's happening. You know, and uh, yeah, let's, uh, thanks for that. So what I do is, I'll just show you. This is an on-click, okay? This is an on-click JavaScript, uh, you know, thingy on an HTML anchor. It's a hyperlink which has an on-click over here, and obviously the on-click has to be connected to some piece of JavaScript, okay? So you now have inserted some JavaScript into your JSP, right? And what is this? In fact, it is using prototype, you know, to call some URL. Uh, over, you know, prototype is obviously an Ajax framework. It simplifies calling, making that Ajax request as and all that. A uh, couple of other things, you know, which you need to do in a professional looking application, I would say, um, is, you know, in most Ajax pages, you have something that keeps, you know, saying, you know, please wait, some Ajax is going on, right? You know, we make a big joke about it in the office. And other things I want to point out are JST iterate C colon for each. You know your bread and butter for JST application, right? And the in fact C colon if is conditional logic, right? You you in fact you find yourself doing C colon if a lot of the time. If the user is this type of user, show this. If the user is like this, don't show the blah whatever. Okay, okay. So I think you're getting the idea here. This is getting more and more complicated, and suddenly you're not dealing with pure HTML. In fact, this is far from pure HTML. This is a whole lot of other stuff, and it's not just consistent other stuff. This is a mixture of JSP, JavaScript, there is more. So let me keep building this. Uh, you know, in this case, this is a table body with an HTML ID. And you know, I have to, since we are, I know what's happening in the background is obviously there's an HTML table, it's got many rows, and each row has an on-click method, right? You know, and it's dynamic. So when I click on-click, I need to identify which Row has to be refreshed. So for that, obviously, some you know funny tricks happen. You know, I put I concatenate underscore dollar, which has become JSP expression language, so that I have the ID of which row I'm thinking about. Okay, so I'm calling it a hack. I'm sure you will not disagree with me. And the Ajax response handler is another piece of JavaScript. Again, it's prototype in this particular example. You could have chosen Dojo. Or Yahoo, UI, or you know, there are a lot of other options available nowadays as well. And finally, you have to replace the HTML. That is a very crucial part of the entire Ajax lifecycle. You've got some HTML response back from the server. You have to do a replace on the browser window somewhere. And uh, finally, the last, you know, bit of uh, you know, I would say horrible uh, consequence, you know, is you ending up, uh, you know, mixing JSP expression language, and uh, you have a URL that's related to your MVC framework in JavaScript code. You know, and by the way, I use NetBeans. NetBeans is in the news now because they've just released the latest version with, you know, JavaScript editing and all that. So JavaScript auto complete and all of that. So I'm using that, but even the great NetBeans, you know, latest features cannot support this kind of stuff. I mean, how on earth will NetBeans know that this is? JSP expression language plus you know something related to Spring MVC. So I think you get the point. I think uh, this slide says a lot. Sorry if it wasn't visible, but you get the slides later. But I hope I talked you through uh, a lot of the implications. So uh, again, this is not the. Let's see what happens when it comes to Wicket. Uh, again, the warning is this is a slightly complicated example, but I'm just again like before. I'm going to highlight the points that. Uh, directly map to the previous example that I showed in JSP world, okay? So this is the exact same stuff. Uh, of course, selected bits of the code have been shown for effect. And I'm just going to build the slide again, telling you what has happened in this case, okay? So no more C code and code for each. You have something called a list view, which is a special wicked component that does iteration, okay? Um, you have now this is very interesting, you know, now you are actually working with Java, you are actually working with object oriented concepts, okay. So in fact, my personal experience when I started working with Wicket is that 
I started relearning Java. Okay, so I have been this guy, and I'm sure a lot of you would relate to this, who had been working in the procedural MVC action world for so long that I actually forgotten a lot of my Java fundamentals. Okay, and, uh, you know that might sound very dramatic, but it's true. Um, another example in this case is. Um, I'm using the constructor. See, now I've introduced a second Java class because it makes sense for me as a developer. Okay, the table row is one component, and the, when the row is expanded, for convenience, I decided to keep another component. And as you will see, Wicket has another uh, feature which is part of the Ajax uh, engine of Wicket that allows you to replace one component with another. So it becomes very straightforward. Okay. Uh, I'm using a constructor, so passing data from here, these are the constructor ar arguments in this case, they go here, and so this component now has all the data that you are interested in, you know, um, you know, you have to, uh, they will automatically generate an HTML ID for you if you want one, by default it doesn't, so again, it's something you don't need to concatenate anything, you know, it just works. Um, in fact, this is something I like a lot, there is, uh, in fact, some of the Wicked components in the Wicked extensions project actually have this amazing feature where it will automatically bring that spinner.gif icon and put it in the page at the correct place automatically. You don't need to worry about keeping that image in your resources folder, connecting it to your HTML, nothing. It's a very neat feature. I really, I really like that a lot. And um, now you see, on click, this time it is pure Java and there is certain beauty Again, I don't know how, uh, maybe if you guys have worked on Swing applications, this will start making a lot of sense to you guys. You know, having event handlers like this on click, here Java, where you are post, in this case, uh, the link class has an abstract method called on click, which you have to implement, you know. What does that mean? It, it's a good thing. It means that the IDE will tell you, hey, you are, you developer, you have to implement on click. You know, this is a method signature. You just you just put some hot key in that means or eclipse that method stuff will be generated for you. You have autocomplete. Uh, it's great. I mean, so that's what I want you to think about. You know, have we been uh, moving in the wrong direction all these years in Java web programming? I personally feel it's uh, we have been going in the wrong direction. Finally, the most important part uh, I'm taking, I'm replacing this component, the self, with another component, which is. Uh, of course, constructed here. I'm saying expanded panel is another component, and I'm doing a replace, and it's a one line of code that actually triggers everything that we saw on the previous page. Request has to be sent to the server, someone has to handle it. Uh, the HTML has to be sent back, which is the new HTML corresponding to what has happened on the server side, and it has to be put back into the page and plugged into the right place. While that action is happening, you should show one spinner.zip telling the user that Ajax is happening, please stay off the screen, whatever. And it all just works. Okay. So, and finally, um, you have to understand what happens to the HTML. I would ask you to again remember the hello world slide that I showed earlier. When you see the HTML is pure HTML. Okay. So, this is a fairly tricky, I mean, it's not very great, but obviously there are three images, you know, and some color has to be there, you know, some class, CSS class, right. But the beauty of what has happened. Uh, by the way, I'm also showing you what happens when you use a wicked panel. Remember on the previous screen, I said that the components have been modeled as separate Java classes that can be reused. And this HTML goes side by side with those components. So it suddenly is one of the things that happens when you start using wicked, you start forgetting about the old page, page, page navigation view of doing applications and you really become more closer to Swing or Rich Client based application, where you're just refreshing parts of your page. I know that it makes sense, I have a couple of slides on that later. So, um, there you are, you know, you can see there are some table columns, there are three images over here, and then, you know, some placeholders where the dynamic data, which in this case are the numbers, along with the hyperlink, are plugged in. Okay. Hope that's clear. So, this is another interesting slide, this is obviously, you know, just uh, this slide is designed to scare you further in case you are working with Spring or Strux or Strux 2. Um, you know. How different do you see it from JSON? <coughs> oh good. <coughs> Part that thought, I have, uh, I am glad you asked, I have a slide so on that. Both JSON and Wicked seem to be heavily influenced by .NET and they are just copying a lot of these features from there. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, very true, this is uh, not in true in the sense a lot of people say that. 
Um, first of all, now I'm not at all uh, aware of .NET, so I can't really comment on it. But from whatever I've heard, and they can have part of everything in this to .NET. I mean, the code behind the page, the parallel list view, everything. I mean, it seems to be heavily influenced there. Okay, it's not really .NET. If you go to the net, you'll find that Apple will introduce this called web object long back. So we can argue that .NET copied it from Apple. So let's not get that kind of argument. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, about JSF, it's a very important question. I'm sure that's a burning question for everyone here. I anticipated that question, so I have a slide as a backup. So remind me to show that at the end. We can certainly have a bit of discussion on that. Yes, another question? Or well, I think we'll park the questions. Yes? JSF project started even before Thank you for that. I didn't know that. So. <laughs> Oh yeah, sure. Can you imagine it will because how will it render it? Very good point. So what now I it, first of all most browsers are smart enough to show this straight away, right? Okay. What we will do in a real life project is that we will have HTML body and yes, there will be some CSS involved here. It's a very good point. Uh, so you will uh, model that page, you will have to add that bit of header stuff purely for the sake of helping your designer model the page. But at runtime, only the panel part is taken. So, does that answer your question? This looks like a carbon, carbon copy of tapestry almost. What I see is. Yeah. Okay, okay. We have a tax, we have an ASP.NET tag, good. Okay. Uh, very interesting, okay. This is, a, this, is, this is again a frequently uh, not asked question, frequently made allegation. Uh, okay. okay. So, there are a lot of similarities, I agree. However, there are a lot of differences also, which again, I'm not really qualified. Unfortunately, I'm not a tapestry guy. I have done some work on JSF, so I'd like to answer those questions. Uh, okay, so finally, let's, uh, you know, let's get on with the presentation, and then we'll take your question again. Okay, so I'm just, uh, again, making you sit back and think about what you have been doing uh, in all your life. I okay. mean, all your years of working with struts and uh, all those old frameworks, which are now, people are now calling struts one legacy, right? Do you ever expect that when you were working with struts uh, in all those old days? So, yeah. Um, so, everyone agrees we're all working with web applications, so we have HTML, Stack, CSS. Um, let's assume for, for this discussion we're working with JSP, okay? So, JSP, that's a very straightforward choice. Um, okay, the moment you introduce an action framework, it started as a days of trucks config.xml, you will have some XML config. Of course, there's a lot of action happening today, like people are using annotations to drive your mapping, you know, uh, you might, uh, and, and stuff like that. Uh, no arguments about this, this is your controller code in the trucks stage, this would have been, I don't know, trucks action, something, what is that? And uh, in Spring MVC, you have all kinds of controllers, right? You have form controllers, you have you know, controller, yeah. whatever. They have stack controllers as well. Okay. And, and you can argue that JSP is not, it belongs in the JSP column, but I will argue against it because it's so important, right? Uh, as a developer, you're encouraged to not use JavaScript scripts, right? And you're supposed to use C colon if, C colon for each, and I said this is a huge part of your life. And especially when you use internationalization, you just use the format tags and all that. Okay, so this is core again. The, the point I'm making here: this is a different language, right? Certainly, look at all the stuff that you are having to do other than Java. Okay, look at all the other stuff that you are now adding to your stack, yeah, if you want to call it that way. And it does, this goes on and on. So finally, um, right? If you use structs, you have the structs form tag, right? And if you use Spring MVC, Spring MVC today has introduced uh, form tag, you know. Okay, so they are convenient, yes, I mean they are there for a purpose, but again you have to learn that, right, and you know, you start working, your ID starts getting more and more confused, right, you have this, you, I mean one of the things I hate is you have a form and then you have form action is equal to open double quote, then one angle bracket, and then you put something there, I mean, I just hate that, okay, so, um, and then, so your project goes live and then your manager comes and says, see, I want Composition, I want aggregation or something like that. And you want all your pages to have a common header and footer, or not even common footer, you want left navigation. Okay, So that is something you can't really achieve with JSP include, right? So immediately, somebody in your team says, hey, let's use styles 
and your problem is solved okay so it's another jar file another framework you know another whole set of tags to learn and another way of working with things and then okay security is obviously a big deal right you want you know sag then you want conditional maybe there's a whole another set of tags that you want to add for hiding and showing stuff based on role based authentication and, and things like that and uh, nowadays there's this thing called webflow which is a craze right you know people say i want to model my uh, user interaction as state navigation diagram that i will start i have these blocks you know which will do work i have if then conditions if customer says yes go to this page if customer says no go to this page and then here reuse another flow and then when that flow stops come back using continuation or something like that you know i'm sure some of these terms ring a bell so that's one more thing to start so it's already looking pretty scary isn't it and finally last but not the least the moment your customer says say you know i want some ajax and i want some web 2.0 to happen in my uh, screen okay uh, you know you have to go running around decide on using prototype or dojo or something and you know you add that so that's that's just um, so what if you have an alternative that does all of this okay um, using just html and java that's that's what uh, you know wicket promises okay so uh, the next few slides are just running through specific example of you know differences are faced when i work in the old way of doing things and when i work with wicket uh, the lack of templating you can't have reusable pieces you can't add things you know you know people are trying to do something crazy with portlets you know that's an entire different ball game i don't want to get into here okay i personally found portlets very difficult to work with okay so uh, tiles um, you know so any developer that creates a new jsp page has to remember to include header.jsp and footer.jsp in the right place in very simple cases uh, wicket has a concept called markup inheritance which is very very cool uh, you can define your page which has all the header footer in fact all your uh, you know style sheet resources can be kept here you can even have your favorite save icon uh, all the common javascript all kept here you have a footer in this case okay so your base page java component will add the header panel which will go here okay and of course something has to some dynamic data goes into the footer which is done here so once you have set up once you have set up the html that is common to all pages and the java that is common to all pages on your child pages just have to extend and that's why you see the red box saying that you are using the java extends keyword you know uh, and it's a great feeling suddenly when it starts hitting you that you are actually using using java object oriented features for web development and it's, it's a very good experience uh, if i may say so so on your wicket child pages do have to add one tag but uh, you know this tag doesn't get in the way of uh, uh, what do you say your uh, html design you know it's all xhtml compliant it won't interfere with dreamweaver or you know whatever front page kind of stuff that you are using uh, and it, it, it just works so what happens in this case the, the the child page wants to put hello world and then the header and footer should appear and it just works okay so this is a big slide again i'm probably rubbing in the uh, point because there's a couple of points that i would have missed uh, over the last few slides so let's recap uh, and we're just talking about jsp but remember this may apply to even you know things like velocity free marker or you know similar kind of stuff that you may or may not be using in your project okay true separation of concerns i don't think there's any argument on that reviewability in a browser yes you open it in internet explorer or, uh, or firefox you want to see something in fact one consequence of uh, you know using wicket is your designer or all your ui designers will throw you a party because they'll be so happy they can finally you know work with uh, html the way it should be worked with absolutely no law with that repetition work in pure java i think i made that point this is very interesting this is very very powerful and i um, again i don't think you're going to disagree with you know i mean ids like eclipse and java have evolved over so long and and uh, you know and now you say they've copied it from visual studio but um, uh, whatever be the case um syntax highlighting auto complete is something you are so used to working with java and the moment that you can actually use those features and writing web applications again i say I mean, it's something you should think about refactoring right i mean if you make spelling mistakes in your you know jstl expression language expressions not many ideas are going to tell you that you have goofed up i mean of course you 
And the last point, I mean, how many have actually been successful in debugging JSP? Uh, so, in fact, no one. Okay, it's it's one of the most mysterious things. I mean, I've heard someone who knew someone who was able to debug a JSP, but I've never been able to do it. So, anyway, you get the point. Being able to step through and debug your wicket code is an experience that once you do it, you'll never forget. Okay, and being too dramatic here. Markup inheritance is something I just explained. Panels, you already got a feel. I gave you that example where I modeled chunks of HTML as different components. Object oriented, you see extends, you see constructors, you see plain old Java concepts being used, you see components passing references to themselves to other components. Again, as I said, if you've used Swing, you probably understand a lot of what's happening. And a nice side effect of Wicket is you know all your pages will be XHTML compliant because you know Wicket is rather strict about the tag, which is a good thing, and you know uh, that's what works. Okay, this is another you know, probably a slight tangent from what I was discussing, but I couldn't resist putting in this slide. Um, you know, another thing that I really like when I moved away from JSP. Now, uh, JTrack is actually an application that you know, we go to source code and download it. It comes along with um, a web server. Okay, and I chose Jetty because Jetty is the one that has a much smaller footprint than Tomcat. Fine. So in the early days when I was using JSP, I finally arrived at the minimum number of jars that needed to make up Jetty. And it included some huge jars for some reason and and the score jar actually comes from the Eclipse project. It's a replacement for your Java compiler because as all of us know, JSP is actually compiled, right? You have to generate some Java servlet code and it has to be compiled. Okay. So suddenly your application server, which in my case is Jetty, becomes a lot fatter. Okay? And, and when you move to Wicked, you just throw away all the things. This is the bare minimum and this is sufficient for, for if I may say so, an enterprise class application to run. Okay? Uh, so you see the points I've said. It's not a, you might be thinking, why am I cribbing about you know, size of the application server? But it's something I personally like. I like all the stuff I use to be lean and mean. Okay? And uh, obviously, if you're, if you're embedding a web server, there's a very good news, right? No more JSP compiled, which is very interesting in one way. When you work with Wicked, you no longer have to wait for the page to compile in the background. You know, pages are very snappy when you get them the first time. And uh, the last point is very interesting because for those of you who are struggling with, uh, you know, I will not name names of application servers in your day-to-day -day life, which are, let's say, not Tomcat, you suddenly realize that in JTrack, I'm just using the servlet specification and I'm using Spring. So Spring takes care of transaction management and all those enterprise things. And suddenly, you know, this is all I need. I'm using, for me, Java Enterprise Edition, all those things that you keep hearing about JNDI. I don't need JNDI, all those things. I just need only this much of, uh, this is less than 1 MB, right? And that's my application server. So it's a, it's a message I want to leave with you. This is the direction in which the industry is going. And some of you would have already heard that you know they're talking about profiles in the next version of J2. You'll have minimum profile, which by the way is far bigger than just because it includes JSP and I think uh, JSF also, I'm not sure. Okay, so I don't want those profiles personally. Uh, you know, I just want my wicked profile, which is just three jars in Jetty. Okay, uh, other good things about Wicket are, um, this is great, this is an attacks debug window, I don't think it's very clear, but you know, there's a link at the bottom of every page that gets rendered in uh, Wicket development mode. So this is automatically done. You might have created some normal HTML page, but Wicket has some amazing, I don't know how it does it, some JavaScript uh, foo, it plugs in one. Uh, link, you click that link, you get this Ajax debug window and every time any Ajax action happens, you can see what are the response and the request and response that happened. So it's very useful. Uh, this is another reason why you know uh, you should use Wicket's built-in Ajax. And Wicket again, like many good frameworks, does not force you into ways of working. If you don't like Wicket's Ajax, you can use other options as I will show you. I personally use Yahoo. Um, this is just an impressive diagram I just threw in. It's, it's maybe out of date, but it gives you an idea as to how the wicked um, internal design is structured. Where you have uh, a big class called component from which all other components inherit. Uh, so everything text field, form component, label, 
drop down choice, um, text area, password field, um, everything is a component, it all falls neatly under some category. So I think it's a very good lesson on uh, a great way to use Java inheritance. So you, know, you might be interested in having a look at this offline. Um, so as I said, what about custom components? I would say, um, since JSF has been brought up already, I would say, I think one of the uh, big issues with JSF is the, the, I mean, it's not easy to create custom components. And in fact, it's not easy to create custom components in any other framework. Um, in fact, one custom component that I wrote in the JSP world, which I haven't put on the slide is, I used it, I actually created a JSP custom tag. I, I'm sure a lot of us have done that. <clears throat> and I'm sure you will agree that JSP custom tag is definitely not object oriented, it's highly procedural. So we get some JSP context, iterate, throw some HTML out of the page and you are done. Uh, in Wicked, it's totally different, obviously, and uh, the recommended way of creating reusable HTML chunks, uh, which can be very complex, you can have form components that are reusable, you can even nest forms within each other, which is kind of an amazing thing that Wicked does, which I just remembered. Uh, and um, that's how we can does it with panel. Okay, I have five more minutes. Um, that's my timekeeper. Okay, a quick couple of um, slides on you know page flow. Okay, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I think I already mentioned you know there's a big hoo-ha, there's a major obsession with some people you know about you know you need to model your user interaction as state navigation diagram. And then you can have a reusable subflow which is called. And after the subflow terminates, you should be able to go, go back to the earlier flow at the right point. Okay. Now, do you really need all this stuff? And in fact, this is an example of yet another uh, you know language you need to learn. In this case, a Spring Webflow. I'm being a little hard on Spring Webflow now. I believe in the latest version they are a lot improved. They are they they of course allow you to write this in Java, and uh, I think they support Ajax a lot better now. But anyway, the things that happen in this is the view name, you have state transitions, right? Where you had that uh, box earlier that said yes, no decision. You can invoke backend logic and then come back to the flow. And in fact, this is a mini workflow engine, right? Embedded in your web framework. So it, it, it sounds very impressive. You know, reusable flows are invoked, and then at the end, you need to, there is a concept of scopes, right? Scope for this child flow, or scope for the global flow, and you need to send the data back. It gets a little complicated, but what I um, experienced with Wicked is when you work in pure Java, suddenly the entire, I don't know, you know, the curtains lift and you know, scout, the clouds go away and the sun starts shining, you know, whatever, okay. Um, but I'll just give you an example. This is a page. Uh, from this page, I navigate to another page, so I do it by, you know, saying set response page. But before I call set response, I actually um, told that page, hey, I am the one who called you. So I'm sitting and taking myself, see user page dot, uh, user list page dot this, and I'm passing it as an instance variable to the other page. So that page, when he finishes or then cancel this click, okay, on that page, look at the score. If previous instance of user list page, I mean, this is a great example of Java actually helping you when you really needed it, right? I wanted to I wanted to run a decision. Which page called me? Was it this page? If it was this page, I want to do something extra. Just do some coloring in this case, and then set response page previous, and you're back. So suddenly I realized. I think people have made uh, thanks ten minutes. People have made a big deal about um, page flow as a concept, but I think people have missed the point somewhere. You work with pure Java. At least my personal experience. Things are a lot more straightforward. Okay, so this is another message I want to leave with you. I mean, I'm sure all of you have no doubt in which way the world is going. Is the world going in? You know, page A, click, navigate to page B, entire page refresh, go to page C. Obviously not. Uh, as I said, Ajax is hiding in the air everywhere, right? People are talking about web point, web two point two, mashup, whatever. So people are now expecting your um, HTML pages to behave like thick line screen. And this is what Wicked offers you. It actually is like, as I said, it is just like swing programming. You know, you say, you click something, some panel refreshes. It may or may not be over Ajax, 
which are even if you don't choose Ajax, for you as a developer, the programming model is not about switching from one page to another, but <coughs> replacing sections of your page. Which, in my personal opinion, again after the journey that I went through with Wicked, is, is honestly the way to go. Okay. Uh, very quickly, in the last next five minutes, again some of the things that are designed to strike a chord with you as you know MVC action programmer or web UI framework programmer. Yes. Yes. Suppose you're developing a typical Ajax application, so lots of Ajax to be going in. Then one of the problems that people encounter is how do you manage history? So does Wicked provide support for everything? Yes. Wicked has excellent back button support, which is a big word. It's, a, it's the dreaded word in Ajax framework. Uh, it supports, I wouldn't say it goes so far as to reconstruct um, you know things in the address bar and stuff like that. But if you use a lot of Ajax and you click back button and you click a link on the first page without the page having gone to the server, it will work. Okay? Wicket has a very sophisticated concept of you know rewinding uh, you know events that happen on the page and all that. It's again, as a I'm not a power user of Wicket, I just use it to build web applications, so I wouldn't know it back. But in short, the answer is yes, it has excellent back browser support, back browser back button support. Right? Okay, uh, hidden form fields. All of us use hidden form fields, right? Because we need some way of telling the form subject that oh, this was the uh, object that you were editing. You need to call form backing object in Spring. Those, this would make a lot of uh, sense to people who use Spring MVC. Uh, and in some extreme cases, you know, suppose you have a drop down of some uh, POJO, you know, uh, you may want the MVC framework to take the data and automatically construct uh, a collection at the back end. So, if I click submit, I want a set of user objects or a list of user objects to be available. So in order to do that, there's some extra work we need to do behind the scenes. So all this stuff I'm saying is gone away with Wicked. So how does Wicked handle forms? Uh, Wicked forms are POJOs. I mean, Wicked forms are like this. Uh, you extend the built-in form component. As you can see, you override an on submit method. Again, it makes total sense in terms of uh, language and semantics. And in this case, there are two text fields. Uh, by the way, you can imagine if you open this piece of HTML in a browser, you will see exactly what you will see at runtime. It's a form with two text fields and a submit button. By the way, the submit button is a normal submit button, okay? And um, that submit button gets wired to the on submit automatically, which is on server side backing code, and uh, it just works, okay? If you want to see this happen in real life, of course, you can. Again, I'm plugging my session in afternoon. Uh, keep people attend the workshop. Uh, some other things which I thought were neat and I wanted to just share with you that file upload is built in to make it. You don't need to go and hunt for some jar and put it like comments upload or something. Uh, sorry. Uh, easy to have sub multiple submit buttons. If you do have multiple submit buttons on other flavors, you have to do a lot of hacking, right? If the button name was this, do this, and nothing like that. It's all gone to its own on submit handler. Lot of validator, abstract validator, credit card validator, date validator, number validator, number range validator, number this validator. Um, in the old days, I mean, people from Strut, Spring, and VC pattern would be familiar with this, right? Displaying error validation messages, you'll be showing it against each form field, right? But now, because the Wicket programmers, they like to define Wicket as a framework that provides for component based manipulation of markup. And this is a result of you know one. I mean, this is something that happens as a result of that. Uh, you can see it's a much more nicer and web 2.0-ish way of you know dealing with form validation errors by you're just saying that add the CSS class to each component that has an error, <coughs> and it's as simple as that. And of course, one of the other common things that you can associate with picket behaviors is um, that. You know, if you're iterating over a table, each alternate row should have different color. Again, it's pure Java code. Com compare this with all the mess that you need to do in JSTL, right? If uh, you know row index is equal to this percentage, whatever. Right? Is there the only option available for marking errors because accessibility wise? No, no. This is this is definitely not the default. By default, there's something called a feedback panel. Okay. And battery is on, um, but. This is by default, you have a list of errors happening there. This is just something fancy I did. Yeah. What I mean to say is the sky is the limit for validation. 
people are doing Ajax validation, you tap out of the field on blur, Ajax, so anything is possible. And I seriously mean that. Okay? J free chart, I just skipped through the example, but in the old days, uh, you know, you have to map a URL, which is put in one image tag to some uh, controller, and the controller is writing directly to servlet out stream, right? But in Wicket, you have something called an image component, which in turn takes something called a dynamic image or source. And you know, life is just beautiful. <laughs> okay, I don't probably. Um, and last few slides, Yahoo again, one question that may have been on your mind is okay, I mean, Ajax is fine, but suppose I really want this wow, and you know, my customer is totally obsessed with Web 2.0, you, know, you do have some customers like that, right? And um, yeah, sure. Uh, in, in, this is just one example, but I personally uh, used Yahoo and there are two examples, the date picker and um, you have uh, a modal window which is, in fact, there's a non-modal window, you can have n number of them, keep them around and when you refresh the page, they are still there. You know, that's another uh, interesting thing that happens. So, um, other thing that we may be interested in, secure URLs, you know, because the URLs are tightly tied to a session. There is no way that people can spoof a URL, and it, it's very difficult to do, obviously. RESTful URLs, it's very easy to mount a URL to some data so that uh, you can give that as a bookmarkable uh, URL to people. Internationalization, no problem. Integration is great, no problem. And finally, this is what you end up with. You know, everything is now very simple. You just have a big box widget. I decided to still use some of the security features, but most of the security was actually taken care of by the wicket uh, front end and um, the basic message that I have is this, I think I've made the point, I mean, have you been working in the wrong technology? Well, that's too extreme a statement, but uh, I think it's a fact that a lot of web frameworks and JSF is an example, it tries to move the developer away from Java into a whole mess of HTML tags and not XML tags, right? and attributes and you have to connect attributes to some methods and if you use strings to connect the name and, it, and then you work with structs, uh, I mean, sorry, faces, config.html which is about navigation. Um, believe me, as Java programmers, you guys should be working in Java. I mean, we should be working in Java and that's my point. Another point is, I think you would have realized in your projects, today with technologies like Spring and Hibernate, Hibernate is just one line of code to put your Save your customer to a database. Spring is just delegating to your DEO and just putting transactions as EOP. All the work that actually happens in your projects are on the user interface, right? I and mean, that is why you spend all of your sleepless nights, you know, just trying to get the HTML correct for your customer because the customer is thinking about the layout or uh, you know the color or things like that. So you need all the help that you can get there. And believe me, Wicket actually provides you uh, the best bet. Uh, Use Java, you are, you are, um, we are Java programmers, so we shouldn't be using anything else. And I think I'll leave you with that message. And uh, now I can take questions. No questions? I'll come to the JSF slide, here it is. Uh, JSF, I don't think they're Java components, I don't think they're object oriented components. And feel free to disagree with me. Um, you have the concept of navigation. I've already had a couple of slides complaining about why navigation is a bad thing to do. You should be doing fine grained navigation from within your pages using Java code. You shouldn't be writing some XML file. And then the moment you have an XML file, you have to ensure that the name matches the Java in this place and the name matches in the tag in this place. Um, I, I don't really like that. Complexity, I think, already made the case for that. Uh, poor separation of concerns. A lot of things about JSP because a lot of JSF frameworks are kind of tied to JSP. Not, I mean, probably you're talking about an older version of JSF because JSF is tied to XHTML. Right, JSF one point two, which is recent, and then you start talking about JSF now. My places have been having places for ages. I wouldn't say I don't think it was a uh, out of beta version though. But let's not get into that argument. So um, feel free to disagree. In fact, I invite you to my blog post. Sorry to plug that, but uh, you can continue to have the discussion. I keep getting comments and obviously I got a lot of extreme reactions. Complaining about JSF is a very gutsy thing to do nowadays, I would say, because a lot of people uh, who are great fans of JSF. Yes? There is a framework, I don't know if you have heard of this, called JBoss 
Yes, I follow that. One of the very interesting features that they provide is uh, in many web applications, uh, whenever you are uh, talking about session state, you may want something which is not as small as request mode and not as big as a session state. They provide something called computational state, which I, which I believe is a very interesting concept. For example, for, uh, you may have something like a wizard. So it stays for those four screens. Next, 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 and then that's it. So you don't want something which is as big as a session and as far as small as a request. Does it provide some other? Um, the first answer to the question is uh, the wicket commenters have worked on scene plus wicket. So you can use wicket as front end and you can use theme as to give all these features. My personal opinion, again, I'm finding it hard to believe that I really need that after having Java. One, uh, what I would answer back in, in your particular example is I would use a single page, okay, which maintains all the state, it will have instance variables, right? And then I would refresh parts of that page, which I can easily do with some table or some other component. Still having that scope, and at the moment, as long as that uh, user is on that page, I have no problem. That's the first answer. The second answer, even if I want some data that has to be persisted or passed from one page to another, like a wizard, I've already shown an example where it's straightforward. A page itself is a plain old Java class, and it's a component. So you can just pass a reference, and that page has access to everything you want, and like the book. What about the overheads, like uh, you are having the wicket kind of tag, like that, kind of tag, which means essentially is the wicket server or something which is interpreting that? First question which I can't resist telling you is, uh, there are benchmarks that prove that wicket is faster than JSF. Okay. Yeah, I mean, wicket is yeah. faster than JSF, I mean anything is okay. faster than JSF. Oh good, thank you. <laughs> anything is faster than JSF, please note that down. Um, but uh, if you are worried about performance, uh, I have done benchmarks on my own and uh, I can show you that later. Uh, if, in fact, the download data track, it comes with a JMeter test and you can profile it. I invite you to profile it and blog about the results and all that. Nothing wrong with it at all. In fact, the bottleneck, like most people would argue back when you talk about performance, is the database. The Hibernate code is taking up most of the time in my application. Right? And of course, you know the second argument that people will come up with. It is your network uh, latency that will be the biggest bottleneck in your application. In terms of scalability, point number one, there is a, a website called Poof. I don't know if you've heard of it, which is one of the famous high-scale websites using Wicket. Uh, the second point is there are technologies like Terracotta available now, which are all about clustering the JVM and Wicket has. Apparently, they are like made for each other, so you really don't need to worry about scalability when you use Terracotta, and Terracotta is open source. And another thing which is interesting, and again, I'm not a power user of Wicket. I know for a fact that they have built-in clustering features into Wicket. Very basic stuff that do not rely on any application server features. As long as you can persist or serialize stuff to your file system, your temp directory, Wicket has built-in cl built clustering support out of the box. Okay, so it takes care of the session and, and that kind of thing. I don't think performance is the concern at all. Okay. Okay, thank you so much for your patience and again.